good morning, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome to today's Gong Online event. Um, my name is Dara Connolly. I'm a recruitment manager here at Mason Alexander. Uh, Mason Alexander, we've partnered with um, with Gong here in Dublin, helping them scale up their engineering operations. Um, look, we've had great success over the, the past few months and very strong feedback from candidates who have met the business so far. Um, now, today's event is really to give, uh, I suppose, from a UI perspective and React perspective and giving developers uh, an insight into the business uh, and how uh, they, the engineering function works from the, the UI perspective. Um, now, I'm very excited to bring this event here ourselves today. It's going to be very insightful. Um, I'm sure everybody will step away from it and, and gain, a, gain a lot, uh, not just on, on what Gong are doing, but also the best practices they do within UI itself. Um, look, there will be a section later in the event um, where a Q&A, so you will have the opportunity to, to ask a few questions to the team directly. Um, and look, without further ado, I suppose I'll introduce you to our first speaker of the day, which is Aidan Eaton. Uh, Aidan Eaton is, a, is the head of the guild within um, within Gong itself and their operations. I'm going to pass you over to Aidan. Here we are. I think Aiden, you're on you're on mute there. So yeah. We're, oh. Think so. But now can okay, I can hear it there. That's okay. perfect. Hi everyone. So I'm Idan, as uh, they mentioned. So I'm gonna present our front end at Gong. Okay. <clears throat> so um we at Gong, we have uh, we grown quite a bit recently, and we keep on growing. So uh, we have uh, founded what we call the front end guild. So we want to build a front end community inside inside Gong. So I'm going to talk about what uh, what's the front end guild and where the guild, the term guild came from. Uh, we'll talk about how we identify pains, um, what kind of routines we thought about to to. Um, resolve those pains, and uh, we'll show some projects that the guild is responsible for. Okay, so a guild, if you look it up on Google or whatever, or Wikipedia, you might see the first uh, the first uh, definition is uh, from medieval times. So at medieval times, it was an association of craft craftsmen or merchants often having considerable power. We also think of ourselves of front-end developers <coughs> to be craftsmen. All coders are Kind of craftsmen, craftsmen, and have considerable power over our products. Um, a more modern definition is association of people for mutual mutual aid or the pursuit of common goal. And we have a common goal to produce good products. Um, and another definition is a group of species, <laughs> for the developers of species that have similar requirements and play similar role within a community. So the big thing is a. Uh, is a community. We want to build a community where the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. So uh, once upon a time, we were a small startup and had, uh, um, I don't know, kind of a few few developers, few front-end developers and few back-end developers, and things are moving fast because, you know, a small code base and we want to move fast to provide um, value fast to our uh, users. But uh, as we grow, we still want to um, be agile. So we want to still ship um, features really fast, fix issues really fast, and um, um, maintain our, our product. So we thought of ways to achieve that. So we sat together, we wanted to meet, we wanted to say how, how are we gonna act and how we're gonna engage all front-end developers um, to, 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 to make us a community. So we started with the guild meetings and a guild task force. So a guild task force is kind of a, a, like reserve duty. So um, in each uh, each each week, we have one front end developer dedicated. Uh, well, it's time uh, their time is dedicated to work on guild tasks. So we started to um, to. Uh, we published a survey to recognize day-to-day um, -day pains with our day-to-day -day development. So we found that uh, a lot of developers are complaining about 
long flows. So each, uh, each feature to implement was pretty hard to achieve and each uh, small fix, uh, it, it was pretty long flow. So that's one issue we, need, we wanted to talk about. Another issue is common components, which uh, probably every company comes to a point where we see we have a lot of common components and we want to um, uh, gather them into uh, something uh, like a design system. <clears throat> And the other thing that was a big pain was the lack of confidence. So wherever we needed to add a feature or fix bugs, uh, we didn't have um, testing framework or testing um, 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 methodology. So this was also missing. So these were the very big pains at the beginning of the gig. Oh, actually, okay. So today to, to to continue collect um, pains, we uh, do sync uh, meetings. So every two weeks we have a slot in the, in the calendar where we meet and we share our um, um, difficulties. We share uh, different uh, screens, common components, uh, existing components with slightly different uh, uh, behavior, how we want to approach things, how current libraries uh, hold us back or how current how new libraries might help us, uh, every, uh, everything interesting about Fontaine. Also, we have a slot in the calendar for huddles. So let's say I identify a pain and I know that some library might help us <clears throat> resolve that pain. So I we, we'd huddle around an idea and we show, I go deeper into that in the next slides. Uh, we also um, hosting the workshops. So if we want to share uh, share knowledge for let's say how we manage state. So we might host a workshop, a hands-on workshop. So uh, every developer um, in the guild should work uh, more or less the same way. Uh, the reserve duty that I talk, uh, mentioned earlier. So we have a dedicated developer for each week. So everyone can engage and contribute to the guild. And uh, of course, from volunteering work. So let's say I'm a developer and work on a feature, but I also, have passion about, uh, let's say, uh, performance or security. So I might take, uh, uh, ask my manager to work on something uh, more specific, but I need to like um, volunteer, uh, quote unquote, because it's just, <laughs> it's still a uh, work. Okay. So huddles or uh, how, how we come from idea to reality to Im actually implement something into the product. So some developer might spark some idea so uh, they will discuss this with the manager or with their peers and uh, something might uh, build up. So we start, uh, then we start to implement it in some small portion on new feature or something uh, existing feature or tech debt or whatever. Uh, during that implementation, we try to also add the documentation so that we can share it more uh, efficiently. Then we huddle around this idea and we get feedback from the entire guild or whoever is more interested. And then we can hopefully release the new idea or drop it, of course, if it's not fit to what we do. And the, the last step is of course, uh, adopt if something went really well. So we want to adapt it across all teams. So all founder developers can enjoy a new, uh, new and exciting idea. So some of the things we uh, were able to promote to the guild is uh, linting and formatting. So today formatting isn't an issue. Linting is taken care of automatically. Testing tools and frameworks. So this takes, uh, takes care of the quality thing I, I've mentioned. So now um, we have the, the right tools to give us the confidence to uh, always refactor and always move forward with confidence. Uh, newest version, so if we need to update uh, React, recently we updated React with the Guild uh, Reserve Duty, or whatever, it can be other uh, uh, components or libraries, everything. Uh, some desi design patterns, so <clears throat> we, we share across the Guild. Uh, security issues, if we have security issues from, uh, or all security issues. <laughs> um, build process, we, we've gone through, enormous performance, uh, performance improvements on our build process. And um, the thing we, we continuously work on is improving our developer experience in which uh, Amir is going to tell us all about uh, what developer experience is, how we see it, and how we want to improve on that. So uh, Amir. 
All right, uh, let me just open up my presentation and then we can start. But this is something else. All right. Just to say to the audience, guys, if anybody has questions on the guild, feel free to, to pop them in now because you forget them later on. Are you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Are you saying something? I, I was just saying if anybody has questions on the on the guild in that section, feel free to pop in questions as, as they spring to mind and we, we can answer them later on. All right. Uh, so sorry about that. It took me a while, but I'm going to start. Uh, so, hi everybody, my name is uh, Amir Galore, uh, and I'm a developer at Gong for the past four years. Uh, I guess the best title I can assign to myself or is assigned to me is kind of an omni-dev. I just like develop whatever is on my table and whatever comes my way, um, back-end, front-end, uh, architecture, mostly back-end for front-end purposes and stuff like that. Um, anyway. It's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about developer experience and a little bit more. So first of all, I'm going to start with a story. Uh, so I just came back from Denmark and uh, for once in my life, I decided to take a, a very, very fancy car for the ride. Mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of got me thinking, you know, that when going from point A to point B, because that's the entire functionality of a car, right? And a car can be uh, assumed as an interface. Uh, they all perform the same, right? These all perform the same function, but basically you get different experience throughout your journey. And it can be in air conditioning, it can be comfortability, or even a laser gun in the, in the last case. Um, but either way, you know, it is kind of a, a experience. So taking it back to our, our world, where front of development is, is the main thing. Uh, in our world, we know these uh, terms, right? Everybody talks in these terms. User experience, user interface, user journey. That's the entirety of things that we develop. But the question is, can we take it into our own world where we can talk about uh, developer experience or developer interface or developer journey? Is there a correlation between the two worlds? Uh, and basically, yeah, we can, right? But the main question is, what is a developer experience or interface or, or a developer journey? Is it owning the newest Mac, maybe going through the best framework or good onboarding experience, their design system, your components, coding best practices, speed of development, there are so many, a lot of things. And we can even categorize some of these into the categories that I, I mentioned earlier, journey, interface, experience. So in journey, you would get like something uh, of an onboarding experience or level up, like how do you become a better developer within the company that you're in? An interface can be thought as an IDE or maybe the guild uh, where you have interfaces into the company or interfaces out of the company. Uh, and as for experience, which is very important, you can talk about the tech stack and tools that you gain and, and usage. Uh, but other than that, the, the fact of the matter is that same as in the product world, reality is what defines how we, how we choose our tasks, right? So reality is very complex and you aim for the maximum impact usually with the minimum effort. Uh, and that's kind of what, you know, developer experience is actually all about. You research, you define, you understand your, your uh, personas, and uh, Idan basically touched that uh, before. We identify our personas here within Gong. You have the full stack developer, the front end developer, the back end developer, uh, and each one of them has their own goals, behavior, or needs. Uh, and that's a very, very, very complex uh, procedure to go through. So I'm not going to go deep, deep dive into, into that. I rather focus on our story or at least part of our story. So developer experience and interface and journey at Gong, which is you know, what's important to us as developers. So let's go back a little bit, right? We've already discussed this part. We're the guild and our aim uh, is to make front-end developer life in Gong or out of Gong as, as easy and as better and as, as, as 
you know, as fluent as we can in all aspects. It's developer experience, interface, and journey once again. Uh, and there are a few paths to make this uh, thing flow and go. Uh, they're all, they all revolve, and again, Idan mentioned this previously, they all revolve around the developer's responsibility and his need and want for personal growth. It's all about that. Uh, and there's kind of an informal process around this that we have here in the guild and it's gone in general, which consists of like four phases. It's discovery, then a kind of an ideation and understanding like the challenges. It's then presenting and promoting it to your peers and planning and implementing and propagating. So in discovery, we can talk about uh, you as a developer feeling the pain or, or you know, talking to other developers and hearing you know, the pain that they're feeling or even being on the lookout for a new technology or a new model of doing things. And then you take it back, you ideate and you figure out what the challenges are. You conceive solution and, and build a POC. You understand the impact versus the effort. Uh, you can take it back into the guild, talk to your peers, Make sure you and they understand all the big question, all the W question, uh, how to do that? What are we going to do and stuff like that? And then when you reach like some kind of a culmination, you can go about and plan, implement and propagate. So when are we going to do it uh, gradually or is there a cutoff for the integration part? How are we going to do POC? Is there a certain methodology of implementation? Uh, and who is it going to be me because I suggested the change? Or, are we, or should we have like a task force? Is there anybody else within the uh, group, within Gong or within uh, you know, the development, entire development group outside of the guild that we need to inform that we need uh, is a, a responsibility or is knowledge, uh, let's say the build master. We also have like a DevOps, a huge DevOps group here. And within it, there's a certain person that is owning how we do the CI CD. Should he be involved? Um, and obviously, it's always a repeating process. So every time we do this, we kind of restart it. It can be very, very fast, very, very fast process when we identify the impact is huge, but the effort is small. And it can also be kind of a tiring process where we kind of reiterate this uh, along the way. Anyway, uh, again, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, uh, deep dive right now, and you can take it into the panel. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about recent successes. So recently, and I'm talking like within the last few months or year, some of these uh, notes that I have here uh, were of great success. So we recently moved to PNPM. Uh, we integrated VIT. Uh, we moved to an HMR-based uh, development, uh, both local and remote. Uh, we formalized front-end onboarding, finally. Uh, and taken our UI components and kind of like uh, evolved them into a design system as a product. We are literally now creating our own product, our own design system that we're going to release. And various project technical or non-technical uh, spanning from React 18 to kind of trying to like retire ducks from our code base. Um, and I'm going to talk specifically about something that I think is very, 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 um, uh, it's very insightful uh, because it's very easy to sell both within the guild or both within the front end development group that you're in. Uh, and it's very easy to sell outwards to management. And this is uh, integrating HMR or hot model reloading. So talking about how we used to develop code in, in Gong or front end code in Gong. So you as a front end developer used to kind of like own the entirety of the, co the code. And you run the local web server. And it took you around uh, three, four minutes because it's a very, very heavy monolithic Java server. And then you would run a code watcher, which would kind of compile the entirety of code using Webpack and <clears throat> sorry, Webpack and Babel and other pieces of <clears throat> sorry, pieces of, of a, a framework. And that would also kind of take you like three, three to four minutes. And then you would change your code because that's what we all do. We want to make our code better or, or you know, do some feature that we were asked to do. Uh, you would wait for the watcher. That's around 10 seconds or for the JavaScript and like 10 to 60 seconds for the CSS to be, to be compiled. Uh, and then you would literally go into the browser and refresh the page. Most unfortunate, 
And obviously, this is a vicious circle. You would do this every time you needed to kind of like develop a feature. Um, so we identified it very quickly as a bad developer experience. Uh, you need a browser refresh. That means that there is no retention. It's very time consuming, very error prone. You would usually have a lot of context switch. You would go to your Slack or your email or you go to the kitchen to make a, to make a coffee, talk to a person for 10 minutes, and then we may be remembered that you need to solve a bug right now and deploy to production. Uh, and obviously it's not modern. Uh, so how do we make it better? What would be the challenges or what challenges we face in trying to make it better? So first of all, the first thing that we figure out is that there is an application security concern here when you change build processes and, and you try to make changes. Uh, there's a tech integration issue where we need to figure out how do we make our Java server work with an HMR um, technology. Uh, there was a bit of advocating the change both within the development, the front end development group and outside of the front end development group. Uh, how will we make it easy to go to, to propagate the change and how to make it easy for our front end developers and back end developers actually to use it. And eventually having done that, who's going to support if there is a version update or if we find, figure out if there is a bug, how, who, who would take ownership of this? And these challenges were addressed in, in several conversation talks, guild, guild meetings, and, and they're still being discussed to some extent sometimes. Um, and obviously, I promised earlier that we usually, in, in developer experience, trying to identify impact. And we have these you know, three typecasts, the full stack developer, front end developer, and back end developer again. And you can identify that uh, the front end developer would get the maximum impact if we move to HMR. Full stack developer, kind of a medium impact, and the backend developer, probably none too small. Um, and how we did it is pretty interesting, or actually was easier than we thought. We've kind of discovered the magic. We integrated VIT, which natively kind of supports a, a, a proxy methodology where we can pass some of the requests to our backend, uh, to our backend server versus a, a request that we want to compile through a just-in-time compiler, and that would literally go back into the VIT uh, engine itself. And I'm not going to deep dive into this because it's, it's a very complex change, but it was a very interesting one to implement. Um, so going back to my previous slide, uh, running locally with web server still takes us three to four minutes, but running the proxy watcher now takes two seconds. It used to be three to four minutes. The code change is still the same, you need to wait for the watcher, which is when after you, you make the changes, which now takes like around one second for JavaScript and four seconds for CSS, and you would never need to refresh the page. It's HMR, baby. Um, so developers are happier, and there's an upsell to this. And this is the greatest part of, of great creating a very good developer experience. You go to your managers, and you literally show them that it's worth the effort. And this is the effort. This is the worth. The back of the napkin math which we presented to our you know, VP r and and other people, <clears throat> other people in the development group and outside of the development group. This is the math. You have a 40 developers spending 40 minutes a day, five days a week, four weeks a month, trying to you know, literally make all those uh, reloads and changing codes and, 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 and loading the local server and whatever. And these have gone into like what we, we did the math and we figure out that it's 40 minutes a day for that. So 40 minutes a day uh, uh, times five times four times 40 divided by 60, sorry for the hard math, it's 534, 33 development hours per month, which is basically counts as 3.5 developers per month. That's 10, that 10% 10 workforce increase by literally just integrating technology. No hiring done, nothing just basic math and some integration. But at Gong, we have a phrase or an operating principle. And I urge you all to go to our site and look at our Gong operating principle. And it's one more, meaning that when we did something really good, let's do it even better. And this is the better part. Uh, we implemented uh, the HMR with a remote server, meaning that the front-end developers would never have to, <clears throat> would never have to run a local web server again. 
uh, removing another three to four minutes of the development wasted development life cycle. Only using the uh, VIT proxy as a watcher, proxying a remote environment that we have in the cloud uh, and everything else remains the same. Going back to the back of the napkin math, uh, okay, I'm not going to get into the mathematical equation like before, but basically there's no local end load time. There's no local database. There's no data migration script, AKA the backend is not my problem anymore. And going a little bit back into the math, let me just give the final conclusion. We estimated that we are saving Gong right now, eight front-end developer, including the frustration. That's 20% work in, workforce increase, which is, I think by all accounts is amazing within our, our grasp. Um, so that's it about the HMR and that's it about uh, the developer experience as we see it. There are two takeaways. And one of them, or the main thing is that a developer experience and interface and journey are like any other software development life cycle. It comes and goes uh, in phases, there are bugs, there are every, everything is the same as you know as, as a developer in a regular product, right? Shit happens and trust me, I've been there and I'm still here, okay? I've made a lot of mistakes throughout the, my life cycle here at Gong, specifically related to developer experience. Uh, and it's a process, right? As I said before, there's a discovery, there's an ideation, there's a, where, a place where you meet your peers and you talk and you promote and you try to figure out if it's a good case or a bad case. And when you get the get-go, plan, implement, and propagate, which is the most amazing part. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and if you, do you have any questions, I think, think we better take it into the panel. Sorry. Yeah, um, true. I'm also gonna... <laughs> I'm also going to run you through part of the, the demo. Uh, we decided that it would be a good idea to kind of present what Gong is all about, uh, especially in the front-end side of things. Gong is very well known in the sales, uh, in the sales world and other worlds. Uh, and if you go about asking the companies you're working, you know, your salesperson, do they know Gong? Probably 80% of them would say yes. Uh, we're well known there. Uh, less known in the development, sorry, in the development community in Dublin yet. But let me share my screen and, and little, you know, do a little conversation, sorry, do a little bit of conversation about our, our Gong uh, thing, web app. So this is our web app uh, and this is a, sorry. yeah, this is kind of an old screen. So I'm not gonna talk about it, but this is the first thing that you meet when you log into Gong. Uh, and I, obviously I kind of am apologetic about it uh, because we are aware that the experience is not entirely uh, um, fluent yet, but we're making the most of our effort and, and taking all the guild processes and all the guild power in making it even better in all pages, in all web, in all the web app uh, components that you can uh, think about. And going back to where we started, like what was the first thing about Gong that we started in? We literally started in, in a very, very simple screen that literally showed you like uh, a bit of a recording uh, as a person that uh, integrated with, within Gong. Hey, Your recording you know, yeah. is not gonna yeah. present it, but the power of Gong used to be its backend. We used to show, we used to uh, ingest a lot of data and show you kind of like in this call, who were the speakers of the call? And we would use AI models and machine learning models into doing all of these things. Uh, creating transcripts of the, of the conversation, uh, implementing some video heuristics and, and uh, extracting like when was a screen share being done, uh, machine learning to kind of figure out what the topics that were mentioned in it. For a backend engineer, this is very, very interesting, you know, how this is being done, data is being ingested. But from a front end perspective, not as much, right? The screen is nice, but we can do better. And we actually did. And we move forward into another aspect of understanding a call, which is understanding multiple calls, okay? What happens when you have like a, a conversation or like a deal or, or you know, an ongoing conversation where you 
So you need to understand what's going on in the entirety of this of this process of this process of of, of selling something or handling some some customer uh, conversation. And we developed this highly complex uh, single page application, which we call the deals page, uh, and it has various ways of presenting the data to our customers. Uh, first of all, via kind of a grid that shows you whatever is happening within this call, uh, sorry, or, uh, or presenting you the same data about what's going on within your team if you're a manager, or kind of like forecasting information. This is not, this is not me, so obviously I don't have any data on my, on my uh, user, on my sale user, but presenting you, the, the user, the data in various ways that we've been able to ingest it. Uh, but this is also kind of a nice trick. It's just presenting the data in various information. And from there on, we kind of moved and progressed into a very, a very interesting uh, solution, taking back end engineer and front end engineer all together, trying to figure out how to solve the issue of as a person, as a person, as a user that is using Gong, what are your objects and what are your next, what are the next things that you need to do? And we came up with kind of a screen that we're very proud of, uh, both back end and front end, uh, because it integrated all methodologies across the board. <clears throat> but from front end perspective, uh, first of all, it's built only on top of our, our uh, design library, taking into account every little bit of information that we've learned so far across our journey into how to design good user interface and how to build it, how to scale it, uh, ranging from a, a to-do list, right? Uh, that came from maybe a machine learning, you know? You've talked to, you've talked to Chris and Ramon and Michael Jean. Maybe it's a good time to email them, spanning into like, let's, okay, let's email them. Let's integrate it into your Gmail and open a draft. And this is auto-populated by Gong based on our machine learning or based on templates that the user already added. Uh, we already are inserting uh, you know, the people that we want to talk to and, and make, you know, take a second and figure out that literally we, we do everything. Gong is doing everything for you through its UI and user experience uh, and user journey, uh, you know, think tank or thinking. Uh, spanning and opening, like, why would you do that? Uh, maybe there are, sorry, maybe there are, you know, there is no conversation and you need to reschedule. Okay, let's open a draft. Uh, showing you whatever you as a person need to know about your next object in life or today's object in life. And there's always, there's also like a thought about opening up to a month and stuff like that. But I'm going to stop now. I'm going to pass the, the baton back to Idan, who's going to talk to you about uh, you know, our design system and our future thought about that. So thank you again. Right. I'm going to just stop the share. Idan. OK, thanks, Amir. Great demo, by the way. And great talk about the journey of, of, uh, of an idea. OK, so I'll try to share the. Yeah, but I should take a second. Okay, so maybe to share, right? Yeah. Okay. So the story of our design system. So we we used to we we used to have a a library of common components. So we used to have a need for common components. So we just created a new folder and put all the com common components there and uh, um, um, consume them from there. But <clears throat> of course it's not enough. We wanted the design system to be an independent product that we can um, um, progress independently without connection to the, to the actual product. So the product presents the needs for common components, but the, the design system needs to, to, to grow and to be able to um, collect contributions and to be consumed easily. So we wanted an, uh, an independent product and it can be uh, progressed, by, uh, progressed by versioning and can be added features to and can, and can solve bugs by any, any front-end developers in the, in the company. But also we are thinking uh, ahead to 
maybe opening it to open source and receive um, uh, bug fixes or new features or new feature um, requests from the development community of uh, globally. So the idea of the design system is to have a centralized styling. So we have um, um, uh, um, semantic tokens for colors, for font sizes, for spacing, for shadows, all those things. We want to introduce familiar interfaces, both for our users, but also for our developers. We want it to be as easy to contribute as possible because we want everyone to engage on it. And we want it to be easy to consume because we want to use it in all our products. So we came to a realization that uh, we need to, we need uh, specific resources to work on that. So we need a uh, special team to, that all uh, their work would be on the design system. So we recruited the new designer, which uh, I'll, I'll show the process later while, what she does. Uh, we want the design system to be focused on the design system, to, to work on that product. And we want a contribution to be easy, as I mentioned earlier. So the, actually the, the responsibilities of the design system team is to collect the, the commonalities between components in all Gong's products, pages, applications, and, um, and rewrite the specs we, want, uh, we need to implement in order to use it as a, com as a really common component. So the next phase would be to implement the new specs. So now we can implement a common component and then can use it everywhere and the users will have a similar um, experience across all, all Gong products or other products if, it, if we succeed with the open sourcing it. And of course, we want to adopt whatever the design system is producing, we want to adopt it inside all our products. So um, we, we currently start working on it. So the, we, we had the preliminary design system, which, still, uh, use, which is still a part of the big repository, but we are currently working on a different repository, uh, which is uh, true, truly independent and can uh, uh, progress by itself. And we want to actually do the same process for each of our um, sub products. So each page uh, in the web app you see before, is actually uh, kind of a module, independent module, independent product. And we want to take the success of the design system and build on top of it um, more storybooks. So we would have the storybook of the design system and we have storybook of one app and another app and another app. And we want to present it in a single storybook. Uh, we started the POC on that and it looks really, really nice. So that's uh, another big uh, success story coming from our guild. Um, and uh, that's it for me. Uh, we move to uh, Ellie about our future challenges of our guild. Um, Ellie, take it from you. Yeah. So, hi. Hi, everyone. I'll share my presentation. Just a moment. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to make it short so we'll have enough time for the panel. Um, so my name is Ellie and I'm a team leader at Gong. Um, and I want to talk to you about our future challenges, actually not just future challenges, it's our current challenges as well. Um, so yeah, part of the things I'm going to talk about are going to connect to the things that Idan and Amir talked about. Um, so uh, because it's, it's basically eventually all connected. Um, so let's talk uh, about Gong's evolution. So, so the company started in 2016 and started as a very uh, small uh, uh, company, with very few developers. If we're talking about the front end, we're talking about like a couple of developers and everything was of course developed very fast and, and it was very easy to communicate between all the developers They were all practically sitting in the same room. Um, but the, the company uh, got bigger. When I'm saying the company in general, all the developers, um, we, we, we got uh, uh, bigger. But of course, it's also relevant specifically for the uh, front end, um, uh, our front end division. Um, so um, uh, in 2019, there were already about, you know, more or less maybe 10 developers, a little bit less than that. Um, we were still very fast. Okay. So we were still. Um, um, moving fast and, and the communication was again still very close between um, the developers and, and it was uh, um, still um, quite easy to sync between us and to make sure that we're all aligned and, and that you know we're not stepping on each other's toes. Um, if we're going and looking today, we got 
really bigger. Um, and, um, um, and now we're looking, as you saw before, as, as Amir mentioned, we're talking about around 30 front-end developers. And that's, that's only the part that are actually uh, focusing mainly on front-end development. We also have additional full-stack developers, which are you know, um, um, switching between uh, back-end and front-end. So we're actually more than that. So now we're a very big um, yacht. Um, but we still want to move fast. Um, and, but of course, um, it requires um, some, you know, uh, attention, some processes, and you know, a lot of thinking, which is part of what was already discussed here today. And looking forward, we want to be a huge um, uh, ship um, uh, that you know we will be able to um, develop a, a lot of features and, and take our our product uh, forward. But we still want to have a very um, um, strong engine. Uh, so uh, we will still uh, continue to be fast um, and agile, as Idan mentioned in the beginning. So one of our biggest challenges, actually, is how to continue navigating this huge ship, which is also all, which only getting bigger as time uh, goes, uh, and still uh, navigate it to be a, a market lead and to um, still have a, a good development experience. So just to mention um, some of our challenges, again, I'm not gonna go deep into any of them, but um, in general, um, we have a few um, uh, challenges uh, and the main ones are, uh, first, of all, first of all, is models uh, isolation. So Idan mentioned it a little bit before, but generally today we are uh, a multi-page application. Each page we can look at it as sort of, uh, of a model, um, but they're all uh, connected. They're not separated. Um, and also we have um, developed some features that for us, we're, we're considering them as, as cross page features. So for example, and, and Amir talked to you before about the assist. So as you saw, we have a dedicated page for the assist, but we also want to integrate the assist um, uh, components and, and functionality into uh, different pages, into several other pages. Um, well, this uh, this makes the, makes the, the, the makes us uh, um, get to the point that every change that we need to make in those cross-page components or, or cross-page features, any change there will affect all the pages. Um, and it also um, doesn't allow us to have some kind of a versioning of the feature or a versioning of the component. Um, so that's just, just one example. Another example is you know, what Ijan just, just talked about, the design system that you know, we have also and, and common basic components, but we also have components which are not, you know, the the classic basic components of a design system. But they're but but they still should be. There are more complex components, but they still should be common. So uh, basically, now because everything is is um, is together and not isolated, every change that we make, and every version that we want to develop, or every addition we want to make to a component. Um, it basically affects uh, all pages and all, all the teams. Um, so that's uh, one thing that we're starting to tackle. Um, the second thing is uh, technology and methodology alignment. So as I said, we, we're growing. There are a lot of developers. Each developer came from a different company, from a different um, point of view of how things should be done, how uh, formula should be developed. Um, um, so uh, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, people um, uh, coming with what they're used to do, and we have to be aligned. We have to have some kind of alignment regarding our technology and methodology. Um, uh, we have a few ideas of how to tackle this uh, part. Um, one of them is to uh, have in the future start having um, some kind of workshops within Gong, you know, workshops that the people from Gong can take ownership of. And, um, and we believe that these workshops will help us um, keep everyone in line, but also allow people to contribute from their knowledge and from their opinion. Um, so that's regarding technology and methodology alignment. This also connects to the third point, which is personal growth. So we have people that um, and they, want, they want to progress, they want to uh, contribute, um, and also uh, Gong wants them to uh, progress and contribute. But the question is how this is uh, done. So um, basically, um, as, as Idan uh, talked about before, we have the guild. And, and in the guild, we're actually um, really looking forward and, and looking for people that want to contribute and want to um, um, raise ideas and, and want to affect and, and you want, want to influence 
um, you know, the company and how the front end development is going to be in the company. So we're actually very interested in, in, in this and, and we're actually working on processes. And again, one of the processes, um, sorry. Okay. So what we're saying is I say, we want people that, um, that, that want to innovate, that want to be involved and want to contribute. Um, so we're saying, um, if you have an idea, you, you, you need to own it, which means, um, first of all, you need to come with the idea, you need to pitch it to, to, the, to the guild. And, and, you know, pitch it means show the value. I mean, we're open all the, all the time to um, introduce new technology or new methodologies or your new components um, or whatever, uh, but it has to have value, you know, for, for the team, for the company, for the product. Um, and after you, you pitch it, then you have to do some investigation, you know, have to do some research and, and understand um, what's the right approach. And after you, you do that, just present it to the guild. Um, uh, this is part of the huddles that, that we done mentioned. So show some kind of POC that is a result of, of, the, of the research and, in, in, and the investigation and compare it to other solutions if there are any. And, and of course, we can talk about it and, and of course present the pros and cons. So we will have a good picture of what we're going into and we'll be able, it will be easier to decide um, where we're going. Um, the, 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 next, the next stage is let's talk about it. So, um, uh, so that's an open discussion between all the people that have some, any information or any knowledge they want to contribute. And eventually, you know, we're uh, taking the decision in the guild and once the decision is, 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 is ready, and let's say that the idea was accepted because it really makes sense. And so the next phase is just go and execute it. Um, and as a, as a study case, I wanna talk about a rich text editor, um, which um, actually, you know, one of our very talented developers, uh, uh, Dan, um, he took this uh, um, a task upon himself. Um, and this was only about like, maybe a couple of months after he um, joined the company, maybe even less. Mm -hmm. And so he went through all these stages that I just mentioned. He did the research and the investigation. He made a comparison. Um, we, 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 um, um, so, so we checked a few options. He, made, he checked the, op the option, um, state and draft and some other options that he uh, took into consideration. Um, we were looking for something for rich text that will answer all our needs. And therefore, we had we we need, we had had to have something which is very uh, that we can change and we can um, you know um, have have uh, uh, the option to add any additional extra feature that we want. So we we so he presented the, the idea and and showed a very very good comparison uh, between the options. And eventually, we we chose um, we went with Slate, and he actually developed uh, in a few single months he developed the entire reach X editor, which is a very extendable component, which allows um, um, to add plugins to it. So you have the basic reach X editor and you can also add a lot of plugins like for a plugin for attachments, a plugin to present uh, images, a plugin uh, to uh, load templates and so on. And actually on top of this um, um, reach X component, it's already um, integrated into our system in um, several several uh, features in the application. One of the these main ones is the one that you already saw in Amir's presentation. is an in 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 the company in Gong um, email editor that we developed, which is of course based on this rich text editor. And also this email edit editor is is going forward and 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 expanding and and getting more and more functionality. And, and using the knowledge that we have here at Gong. Um, so I'm just going to conclude in, um, in my, my last uh, slide. So um, what is the secret sauce? This is, I'm, I'm just doing a little switch from, you know, the more technical discussion that we had here. So what, what's Gong's uh, secret sauce, uh, except for all the things that we mentioned here before. Um, so basically, I think that in a more personal note, I think that Gong is, is sort of a, a home for, for our developers. Um, uh, giving the uh, confidence for each developer and also um, uh, giving them the place to, um, uh, to develop, giving them the place to make, make, to, uh, make their uh, voice heard, being heard and give them the confidence that everyone, everything is going to be okay. 
and as long you know and as long as they're um, 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 giving the right attention to things um, um, and the other thing which is connecting to where uh, what he done opened his um, his uh, talk with his presentation and uh, we're not just looking at gong as a home for developers we're also as he said we're trying to build to take this home and build a, a community so each person is sort of a of a one single house within within gong but we want to make a community and and have a neighborhood of uh, that you know allows everyone um, um to um to contribute but gives them also um the the, the right um, um and construction of doing it and the right processes and the right um, and place to do that so yeah um thank you all for listening to us um and uh, we're now going to open the panel thanks ellie um yeah we'll, we'll start off with the q a and um, then we're a bit tight on time but we'll start off with one or two quick ones here should be the answer um just a question from pan here just wondering what does hmr stand for is yeah that's hot module replacement actually replacement Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, another question for Ian here. So look, broadly speaking, just wondering how you categorize the Gong front end guild. Is it more of a, a kind of community of practice or is it something that's more proactive, like identifying issues and, and opportunities or lobbying for resources to tackle these and creating task, for, task forces um, to, to kind of take on the issues? Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, that's what the routines I talked about uh, was all about. So we have like, uh, we have the constant meeting where we uh, raise problems. That's where we collect the issues and we can uh, uh, discuss them and, and uh, talk about them. Some of the issues are, uh, as Ellie said, we give someone the ownership to to own some, some issue and, and solve it on, on the resolution actually. And some of the issues are actually requiring to, to create a task force. So in this case, we, we as a guild raise the issue and we understand we don't have the manpower. It's not just a single developer with an ownership. We need some kind of a task force. So we just uh, recruit it. So uh, it, it would go uh, uh, higher at the level and we'll ask for the task force to, we ask for the resources to work on on the certain thing because it improves value of course we need to show that there's something that's value. it probably a lead back to your point Emir, that you were talking about like effort versus impact and that as well and if something's identified like this is actually going to have a bigger impact than maybe first looked at in the business that's it's like okay let's do you know, if i can get some extra resources on it perfect um question from sandro here just um wondering around what's the kind of process if the proposed task exceeds the time frames of the uh, informal process of the guild yeah that's another good question but but uh, as we mentioned we we try to to um, describe not all tasks are time frame like we have a planning and the planning can change we understand that the plan can change all uh, uh, team leaders and all group leaders know that plans are there for change to also change. So we have a plan for something and we can uh, have an um, estimate on a task. And whenever a risk, um, uh, whenever risk rises, we just pull the flag and we can schedule uh, when are we going to tackle this. Yeah. So plans aren't really um, hard stop at Gong. So yeah, so we... really looking at like, identifying what the problem is rather than hard deadlines um, and, and not properly tackling them, I suppose. Um, question from Leandro here, um, just regarding kind of hackathons, you know, where you kind of get back end engineers, front end engineers and products into, into a room together for a day or two to, to kind of hash out problems that, you know, probably outside their comfort zone. Is that, that's something Gong ever do? Yeah. So, so actually, actually we do once a year, uh, where we have a hackathon of, uh, involving the entire R&D and product, uh, and, and departments and research as well and research actually. Yeah. And then and developers are coming all together. Yeah, so basically um, it's uh, we have two days of, of development and another day um, that eventually we're presenting uh, the results and you know having um, having sessions to present all the all, all the results of the of the teams and uh, of course a, a, a nice competition regarding um, uh, regarding the different uh, projects. 
And you know what's nice is that all the ideas um, are, you know, we start in advance and get all the ideas going in. And then we're allowing people to join together, uh, mix and match between teams, mix and mix and match between, you know, product and research and, and development. <clears throat> So that's that, that's we get uh, um, a lot of um, advantage from it um, because except for great ideas and very nice projects that are developed in these couple of days, we're also we're getting some connections, both uh, professionally and socially connections, uh, you know, which are especially important when you know we're we're growing. Yeah, uh, yeah, fair. They create a good buzz around the office and that as well. A bit of excitement for the few days they're happening. I just want to add to, the, to Eli's point that I think I can estimate that around between 35 to 50 percent of the projects actually get productized into our own uh, uh, into our own product. Either it's a technology thing or it's a, a new product that our you know that our product or or you know management team haven't thought about and and we bring it to the table. And I think this is part of the place where you as a developer understand that you always have a place to contribute. Yeah. And sector in value. Yeah, I also and we also have a quality week where we uh, tackle tech debts. And also we can ask for time to tackle a specific issues. So if you want to cover a big uh, section with tests, uh, we can also uh, schedule a hackathon for that. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, guys. One or two quick ones here. Shouldn't be too long. So what's what's the name of the library that you use for your rich uh, text editor? That's uh, Slate. Yeah, Slate is the basis, and we built on top of it the uh, uh, Dan, which uh, Ellie mentioned earlier. It's such an amazing jo job with uh, making it so easy to integrate into to write okay. plugins. Perfect. And then um, just around Storybook, uh, do Gong use snapshot tests? We plan to. We currently don't have them in place, but we do plan to. Once the, the design system is in place, one of the tests that will run for every uh, branch, for every commit, will be a visual regression. Yeah, perfect. Um, there's one last question here. So, uh, some plans from Francis itself. So, how does the value of a new idea get evaluated by the product team? So after all, someone needs to pay for it. Um, so an RT editor um, might be an easy sell, but something more technical might not mean much of a PM or PO um, but loads uh, to, for a front-end developer. Yeah, so I think it's best to start with that we have squads here. So each uh, feature has its own um, team, like we're with the product manager, UX made, UX designer, and the developers and it's, that's it. <laughs> so, and, and we are very much involved in the user reviews and the feature requests. So we know what users want. Yeah. Uh, and the operating principle at Gong is um, uh, raving fans. So we don't want just users, we want raving fans to use our product. So we are all <clears throat> part of that big effort to create raving fans. Perfect, thanks. Um, Final last question there, actually. So, uh, yeah, just to say, nay, thanks everyone for sharing. Um, what are the best things about working for Gong for a front end developer? <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. I it's a big long answer. Yeah, I think yeah. we touched on that uh, through the entire session. Um, the big thing is being a part of the of the of, uh, of a community of a good community that helps you grow. There's a place for your opinion, there's a place for what you think about, there's, there's a place for you to contribute to a bigger whole, yeah. also for the product and also for uh, a developer community. Yeah, yeah. I know. also, um, like, like I mentioned, we're working with pods and, and, you know, our product people are very interested to hear the feedback from, from our developers. So we're actually, um, for each uh, um, feature, uh, we're having pre-kickoffs and kickoff meetings um, to allow the developers, uh, you know, um, um, make 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 their uh, make, make people hear what they have to say about about the feature. You know, whether it's concerns, whether it's suggestions, and, and it's really getting attention. And you know, things uh, change. Part some of the time, things are changing as we go because you know because of the feedback. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, look, really appreciate. Look, um, Ellie. Aiden, Amar, um, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I'm sure the audience do. I think anybody looking to consider a business, 
this type of insight is not generally given, you know, as so you're kind of going off the back of a job description and from my years in recruitment to be able to you know, get insight into a business and um, see how they operate and that as well. It's, it's, it's a really good way of knowing rather this is a business you know, that, that could be a right fit for your for yourself and your next kind of career move itself. Um, so look, thanks very much for the time today. I know audience members and other might be a curiosity to find out more if it was anything that wasn't touched on today. Um, look, feel free to re- reach out to myself on, on LinkedIn or email. Um, as I mentioned, look, Gong and the, the guys have mentioned as well, Gong are looking to scale up their, their front end and React operations in, in Dublin itself. Um, we've had good success with it for you so far and very strong feedback from anybody who's been in the mix. So I'm sure any future experiences will uh, will replicate that feedback. Um, but thanks again for the time today. I know everyone's probably jumping back into work there after a quick bite to eat. Um, but look, pleasure taking the time today to, to speak to you and hope you all have a great week. Thank you all for the Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.